What's going on everybody, Dotnex12 here. And before we get into the video, welcome to my new shop. I built this about six months ago now. It hasn't been on any of the videos that I'm aware of. So in a video soon, I'll give you a rundown of the inside of this shop, but that's not the topic of today's video. In today's video, we're going to revisit the Mod T. This printer was made by New Matter a couple years ago, and they had to close their doors due to financial issues, but this being a Wi-Fi based printer, the thousands of people that bought this printer no longer had a way to use it. So what I did a year ago is I made a video using Cura 3.2.1, I believe, showing how to slice G-code files with Cura and get this printer to run over USB cable instead of Wi-Fi. That version of Cura is no longer available and several people emailed me asking for an updated video. So for about the last month, I've been working on Cura to get this printer to run again. And it does now so what we're going to do is i want to show you how to use this printer with cura 4.4.0 the fan just turned off on the printer so you can probably hear me a little bit better now i recently got a blue yeti microphone out here in the shop so this is the first video that's been made with it so let's go ahead and jump right into this video and see how it turns out and if it helps anybody all right guys so now you can see here the new matter printer utility as well as cura behind it so if you don't recognize this software has updated tremendously since the last video i'm not sure what company updated this software or anything of the sort but it's nothing like it was the first time uh, but you do still have actually easier access to some of your stuff so print g-code file here is going to open a folder where you will get g-code files from there's nothing in that folder because it's the incorrect folder uh, you can still load and unload filament here i'm not going to cover that in this video but if somebody needs a video showing more in depth how to actually use the printer itself, so loading filament, unloading filament, cleaning the nozzle, uh, preparing the bed on it, anything like that, just leave a comment or shoot me an email and I'll be sure to get a video out doing that. But run test print, I don't know if that works. Uh, not when you use it. And I would not try to update your firmware. That could render your printer useless. Uh, so. Just use what's on the printer and you'll be all right, but we'll get more into this later. So here is Cura, and as you can see, I have got a Mod T set up here, but what I'm going to do is go up here to Manage Printers, and I'm going to delete that printer. So now Cura has defaulted back to my Ultimaker 2 Plus, and well, that's not the printer that we're trying to run here today. So what we're going to do is go to up here to manage printers and hit add printer and you will get this pop-up and it looks a lot like a windows pop-up at first but it is not it is for ultimaker this printer runs over usb so it's not networked it doesn't have an ethernet port uh, it will connect to wi-fi but i'm not entirely sure how to do that yet um, but we may get there later that would be something that would go through here but now that we can't get to the settings of the printer with this software, there's no way to tell it which Wi-Fi networks to connect to. So we're gonna to go to non-network printer. It's not an Ultimaker. So we're gonna to go to custom and it's a custom FFF printer or fused filament fabrication printer. And we will name this Mod T and hit add. Now you've got your machine settings dialog here and this is wrong. Uh, the printer is not a cube like this. So it has an X of 150 millimeters, a Y of 100, and a Z of 125 millimeters. The build plate is a rectangle, so you can leave that as it is. And the origin is actually going to be at the center of the build plate. So we can see our origin here. These are our axes, and we need to have those at the center. So when I click that, they will move, and now they're under our vase here. This is our little demo print that I'm going to do. And one other thing, if you go here to extruder one, this is incorrect. Uh, it does not use three millimeter filament. It uses 1.75 millimeter. And on a side note, it will only print PLA from what I have tested. Flexible filament will not work due to the way that it feeds the filament. And ABS, it doesn't get hot enough for that. And it requires a heated bed to print ABS. And this printer doesn't have one can leave all your g-code alone that's all fine and then just hit next so now the mod t has been reconfigured here uh, feel free to stop the video go back watch this watch those settings again if you need to i know that goes kind of fast um, but now what we're going to do is profile so we've got our 
we'll say factory layer heights and stuff here but these are made in your cure these are for the advanced printers like the ultimakers and things like that for you to change and for this printer you won't be able to do that so we're going to go up here and now you can see this profile here but we don't want that profile even though it's the correct profile I'm going to show you how to add it so I'm going to click on the profile and remove it and if I close this out you can see that profile is no longer here you've got extra fine fine normal and all of your various options so we need to go to manage profiles and when you're here these are your profiles for the printer mod T if you add it under another printer you will not have access to it here so we're going to go to import and this opens a folder on my desktop named mod T and here is our profile it is a configuration file and we will just click open and it's a dot cura profile so dot g codes not going to work stls are not going to work they're commonly referred to as a dot i and i file if you can see that little pop up there but we're going to tell it to open you'll get a pop up and then just tell it okay close that out now when you come back up here to your profile you will select custom profiles and click on your profile now if you've seen some of these numbers change there you've got a layer height of 0.2 your wall thickness of 1.2 infill of 15 your print temperature enable re retraction you will want that on with PLA I mean being that's what this printer uses anyways you're going to have to have it on all the time print cooling yes because this printer does have a fan in the extruder it's not quite like the Creality's and Ultimakers while they, where they have dedicated fans blowing on the part but it does help and you will need that on and your build plate adhesion raft is going to make a bigger outline if you will of the model under your actual print so I always turn this off because it saves some times just use skirt skirt the printer will go around the outside perimeter of it within three or four millimeters and just prime the nozzle say if you change colors or haven't printed in a while so you skirt there's no dual extrusion on this printer so nothing there now something worth mentioning these settings are pre-configured from this profile that I will provide with you if you email me or I may actually make put it on Dropbox so it's available for you to just go download you can change some of these I would not change your layer height point two is a, a fairly decent quality out of this printer you're not going to get much better than that with it that's an entry-level printer uh, infill you can change your infill so this is 15 so that means this will have 15 percent filament and 75 percent air that's not the correct math I just like yeah so anyways it's going to be 15 percent filament and that other 85 percent will be air or just open space uh, we'll make this 25 just so it is that 75 percent air since I feel like an idiot now um, and you can also change your supports so this vase doesn't need support but if you've got something intricate like let's say for example you're printing uh, I'm at a loss for words of something uh, let's say you're printing a jet or you want to print a tree uh, you can enable support and then you can choose everywhere or only from the build plate everywhere will mean from model to model only from build plate is from build plate to model so it won't print on the actual model itself and leave spots and you can change the angle if you feel the need or are advanced enough to do that but we don't need supports on this so we're not going to worry about it all right so let's go ahead and click slice down here and now Cura will process that model into layers and you can see it says it's going to take 34 minutes to print this and it may it may not we don't really know for sure so what we're going to do is hit save to file and this will open my mod t folder here and what I'm going to do is it's got sliced G code files here I'm going to open this I'm going to say vase for video number two and I'm going to tell it to save now it has saved so what we have to do now is go here into the new matter software optimize will run through your G code just to see if there's any errors on the printer or in the G code in, in other words it will not allow the printer to over travel or anything that could damage the printer so click optimize and now hit print G code file this is not the right folder don't panic go up here to mod T 
go over to slash G code files if you set your folder like that just go to wherever you saved this G code file now these are showing as Repeter host that's because I've got several softwares on this machine because it runs several machines here in my shop but base for video number two we're going to go ahead and open that and I'll pop my webcam back up ignore that sound that's from OBS and we're going to click open now it will say optimizing and uploading file to printer so now you can see here that the printer has started flashing and it says press button to start printing this froze for some reason I'm not sure that's just a bug with the software but if we press the button the fan will probably start back up yep so now the fan has started back up on the printer and eventually you will see that the carriage will start to move down and the build plate is calibrating itself. You may can see the build plate moving just a little bit there inside of the printer. Um, I can actually pick up my webcam here. I'll switch back to this page and hide myself so that you don't see all of this motion here. But if I go back to this now, hopefully you can see the build plate moving there on the printer. So it's just doing its calibration. Uh, my shaky arm trying to hold this camera still. And now the printer will actually work through this, and it does take it quite a few minutes actually. I'm, I was quite surprised. It's, it's slower than I remembered. It probably takes two or three minutes before it actually starts printing. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is let the printer do its thing. And if you're wondering, once you get to this point, you can unplug the printer from your computer. It does not have to maintain a USB connection to the printer at all. It will continue printing regardless of having a USB connection or not. When I've done this the first time, you could also disconnect it. There are some printers, for example, like the M3D Micros that I've done a couple reviews on. Untethered printing is coming in the future with those printers, but as of now, they have to stay plugged in the entire time that you are printing. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and jump this into a time lapse, and whenever the printer is done, we will come back and conclude. Alright everybody, so as you can see here, the print has finished. One thing I do want to point out, if you notice the nozzle is not very high from the top of the print, the printer does not raise the gantry anymore when it gets done printing. So what you want to need to do is just break your print off and then pull it very slowly out from under it. It does give you a couple of millimeters, but as you can see, there are a few places where it, it had little errors. But otherwise, hopefully this camera focuses, it's supposed to, yep. Otherwise, it's a fairly good looking print. For this model of printer anyways. Now if you go get something that's more expensive like the Ultimakers or the Creality's or stuff like that and you play with them and calibrate them, you'll get prints that look a lot better than that. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you need anything specific on this printer, like I said, just email me or leave a comment. And I'll do my best to either help you through one of those or I can make another video on it and put it out there for everyone to see uh, in case more than one people person has the same question. 
Uh, so yeah, anyways, remember to like, favorite, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, and take care.